Well, he's a good ref. He is a good ref. Very proud of him. This guy, Ali Mahalid. Boy, oh boy, look at this. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. Ali Muhammad, I don't wrestle often. The last time I wrestled, I wrestled against Ali Muhammad. He asked, he had an open challenge. I came out, I accepted it because I don't wrestle very often. I do not consider myself a professional wrestler. Sure. However, I'm a fighter. Yeah, you know, I was a cop for 26 years. I'll go and I'll take it to you out there. And I went in there and let me tell you something, you know, this Iraqi, he, he laid into me. I mean, I went home, I was in an ice bath for two days with the bruises and the soreness and all that. And to team up with Death Row Jethro, who I've known for almost 20 years now, and he is, oh my gosh, he has been a force to reckon with, another former local pro wrestling champion. Look, it's worth being noted. You say he's from Iraq, right? That's I it. mean, hey, look. There's no doubt. You have to respect the man's nationalism. He is fronting his country, and he's fronting it with pride. The problem I have is that he uses it in such a condescending fashion that he can't respect our country or our principles or values. Well, hey, look, you're, you're free to practice what you want here, and his nationalism shows loud and proud, but don't come here and be condescending towards the people for, for going for what they believe in. And I think Ali has made poor, poor household manners in that regard. Well, he has done that even before he hooked up with, with Wayne over here, okay? And this British bum, you know, I'm sorry. Now, Nick, another veteran, Army veteran. You know, he, he, and, I, he and I go back a ways, too. I'm proud of him. He's, he's an excellent wrestler. He's... He's very underrated. I'd like to see him get a championship shot one of these days. You said Army veteran as well, huh? That's it. Wow, thank him for his service too. Wow, what a stud What a stud roster we got here. A lot of Patriots here at local pro, man. And just imagine how he feels about the condescending attitude about Ali. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is basically a match made in itself, right? I mean, if we aren't seeing these guys face off alone, you know, I, what can I say? I guess a tag will have to do. But I can tell you right now that uh, these guys right here, these guys right here, the uh, the nationalism between these two men, between this man's service and this man's representation, it bleeds, and they are adverse to each other. Well, I'm just I'm just wondering what's going on here because these guys, this this has been going on for some time. This has been going on for months, and there's there's Ray Zion. But unfortunately, a couple of months ago, these guys laid out his partner. Ray had to rescue him, literally carried him over the shoulders out of the building. Wow. So Nick steps up. He's going to go ahead and join these guys. Is he joining the House of Spades? I, I, I'm, I have no clue, man. Um, I really have no clue. And who, who? to tell them, wait a minute, who's going to team up with them here? Well, it looks like we are about to have a dog fight in here between well, a whole bunch of colorful national characters here right now. I will tell you one man without a nation, and that is Death Row Jethro. Hold on a second. No! Bobby's back! Bobby Kronos back! What are you talking about? There's I have no way. He wasn't cleared to be back already. That's that can't be right. Well, there he is. Well, I guess you didn't make that up. I blinked twice and he's still here. How can he possibly be cleared to be back at? I I don't know if this is unsanctioned. I don't know what's going on here. And but I'm it looks sure like Chrono and Spade's great relationship, you know, so um this is, this is, you can already see a function of chemistry off the bat here. If I were death row and Ali, I would be a little bit sweating right now. So what are we doing? Are we doing three on two? No. They're back, baby, and Nick is with them. Holy moly, I think we're going to have a street fight out here. 
Is this sanctioned? I'm feeling like it's a tag in the dynamic, know. but are we just going to see an all-out brawl? Well, who, who's who's wrestling I here? I see a ref here. Is it is it two on two? What three on two? What's going on here? I'm presuming if I had a gut instinct that it's a tag. I mean, that's why I said earlier it's got to be a tag festivity, right? But now you're asking that question, and that is a great question. I'm not quite sure. I see a ref in the ring. I see two dudes ready to get in some action here. But well, I don't, I'm not quite sure what the setup is yet. Based on the history with these guys, because there have been a lot of foreign objects involved in these matches. There's been Iraqi objects, there's been British objects, right. there's been army men, there's been military gear used in these matches. So the referee is making sure that everything is up, you know, it, it's, it's on a level. But he's checking the three of them. Is, is D. Wayne working? Is he? Is he wrestling? Uh, he's got knee pads on, don't he? I mean, look down there. That doesn't speak for itself. It's bold of him. I, last thing I think when I see D. Wayne is a ring superstar. So I thought he was a big maestro on the mic and in the corners of people. So. I just hope he's wrestling with the bowler on because that, yeah, that would, that would make me happy. That would be quite entertaining. Now, he is wearing red, white, and blue wristbands. I don't get that. Well, <laughs> yeah. You know. That is a fact. Well, okay. To be fair, doesn't Britain also have red, white, and blue? The United. I'm pretty the sure Union that. The Union Jack. Yeah, I think you're. Sure I think Union you're absolutely Jack has right. Red, white, and blue. He probably look at that and be like, look at the arrogance, the condescension. You think you're the only country that has red, white, and blue? You Come know? on, so Romero. Check. D.U.A. probably would have uh, probably would have raked us over the coals a little bit there with that condescension. So. All right. Romero's insisting that D. Wayne step back into the ring. Well, he's checked everybody else out. You know, D. Wayne usually has the handcuffs that he brings out Death Row Jethro in. Those are in his pockets. I don't know what's going on. Oh, disrespectful to the Iraqi flag. Interesting. Aren't they teammates? I think it was an accident. I hope so. Wait a Last second. Last thing you need is friction. Hold on a second. What has he got? Oh, a set of brass knucks. Come on, man. Brass knuckles? Oh, come on. I mean, <laughs> you got to respect the guy's attempt, but come on. What a dirt bag. <laughs> like we said, he ain't no wrestler. He had to figure out some game plan coming into here, didn't he? So he's got brass knuckles. He's got a lot of pockets there. What? Do you what? Is that a hammer? <laughs> you know, if I oh had a hammer. Oh, my gosh. D-Way, no. Ramirez making sure that that stuff's tucked away safely, but I hope he doesn't land on it while he's, while he's refereeing out there. Is he going to choke these guys? He's bringing out rope now? Yeah, what is going on here? <laughs> he's got like, he's a man of a thousand objects here. It looks like he made a Home Depot run on the way here. Scissors? Scissors. My gosh. <laughs> wow, how many compartments does he have? Did he have one in each knee pad? Did he go in the, is that what the elbow pads are for? I mean, back in the day, it's how they used to do it. You slide them in there, but he's got like 30 different knocks. A base. A, what in the world is going on a here? <laughs> Billy Club. Good luck. He might be the most entertaining guy of the night here, though, I have to say. That got a good chuckle out of me. There is no object this man, this man will not stoop to and try to sneak in. You know, I would just about, I would almost do a strip search on him because I don't trust him as far as I can throw him. And I cannot throw him very far. Yeah, boy, he would have had some trouble with TSA, wouldn't he? That was crazy. Ray Zion saying, yeah, you can use this stuff. I'm going to use a, a chair. This isn't a boat dock. We're not in Alabama. Put the chair back, and let's get this thing started, will you? Ah. The, the promoter stepping in, putting in his two cents. 
makes it very, very clear that this is not going to be a street fight. This is going to be a wrestling match. Yeah, it looks like he won't tolerate that. So what can I say? He's right. This is a wrestling show, is it not? We're about to see things get ugly really fast. Well, Bobby wants some payback, and, you know, you chop off the head, the body will follow, and, you know, D. Wayne is the brains of this outfit. Speak of the devil, he decided he's going to step out. Chrono ready with that lockup, but I think D. Wayne is uh, quite the opposite here. Talking to the people, he, you know, he's such a good talker. <laughs> You think that's all he'd do? I'm surprised he's in this ring right now. He must have been legally obligated. Come on. Look at that. Anything and everything necessary to say no Bobby Crono, huh? Is it cowardice or is it intelligence? You know, breaking up the rhythm, putting Bobby off his game. Well, I'm only going to have to go with the former only because we're talking about experience differences here, aren't we? One of them is a seasoned worker here, you know, a seasoned wrestler. And the other one is, well, you know, he's a manager. This ain't really his wheelhouse, you know? Dwayne ain't really comfortable here. Oh. Well, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Bobby bringing him back in the ring. Tag made to Ali. Ali's been anywhere and everywhere too, trying to perfect his craft a piece at a time, anywhere that'll take him. I see Ali pop into the most hole in the wall places, man. He but he does it just to make an impact and get noticed, man. You have to respect that. But uh, he might be no match for Kronos Technique here. Ooh. Well, Ali just flew in from Colorado. Maybe he's got a little bit of jet lag. Perhaps, perhaps. He looks like, whatever the case is, he is not on top right now. He is struggling to keep Ooh. the pace. Sent on a little low. He didn't get all of it, but he's got him set up. It's a little early to go up, I think. And you know, you bring up that flight. You know, flights can do, it, it, flights can do anything to you. Sleep deprivation can affect your conditioning. It can affect your clarity, your focus, you know? If he's coming in from Colorado, like you say, well, I'd say this isn't a 100% Ali, perhaps. I would agree. Which would make the satisfaction for Krono all the more, wouldn't it? Well, considering the leg injury that he suffered two months ago, I don't think Bobby's 100% either. So, you know, maybe it, maybe it is equitable. However, Ray on the other side. I'm surprised they Ooh. cleared Krono, to be honest with you. Well, I mean, how did he get the doctor to go, yeah. Go ahead and put it on the line with the same guys that put you in that position, fresh off the wound, you know? Well, he's got guts on Chrono's part. I'm not sure he was cleared. Well, either he's got the rehabilitated properties of Wolverine or something, but you know, <laughs> he does not look like he just suffered a, a devastating injury. Basement drop kick from Nick. Oh, look at that. Saying Zion, get back in here, man. We're not finished. Referee's giving a lot of leeway to these guys. He wants to see a clean finish of this. Whoa! Oh. Oh. Suplex gut buster combination. What a tag maneuver. Oh. I am surprised. Death are not taking that lightly. I'm surprised we didn't see Ali's lunch on that one. I mean, you were talking to a man that knows no nation. You're talking about Death Row Jethro. The only thing this man has known is the inside of a cell. Am I wrong? You this are, man has not seen the sun for a very long time until he's free to professionally wrestle, as far as I know. Nick has had enough in D. Wayne. Oh. I'll, and, tell, I'll tell you what, Death Row Jethro, coming from the Louisiana State Pen, he, he is, he's vicious, and he's sneaky, and he's, he's devious, and Oh, my God. Look, I've seen this man across multiple promotions, and he has titles and accolades with him as far as the circuit goes, man. Um, Death Row is intense. Death Row is intense. His choke slam, uh, his lariats, like, 
Jethro Jethro is easily one of the most dangerous men you will step into the ring with in the modern day wrestling climate. You know, I once took a kick to the face. The, his opponent got out of the way and I took an accidental kick to the face by, De by uh, Jethro. I don't think Oh, that cross face, nasty. Man, he didn't listen to no Matt Wrestling School for sure because he's cocking back on that and coming full through. Nasty prison style cross faces right there. Well, it's, it's, it's not so much the contact as it is the follow through. Oh, yeah, 100%. And to think that momentum coming full straight through there, man. Jethro showing his strength. But imagine that big, meaty forearm coming right across your temple two or three times. No, thank you. You tell me you won't be dazed. I'll take the pass on yeah. that. Whoa! Oh! oh. Huge leg drop. That is a lot of humanity. Coming and we're down talking about that man's throat. forearms. Think how big his legs are. <laughs> You know, could probably cause a probably cause a, a set on the Richter scale. You know, you know near earthquake level leg drop there. So doing this 23 years, there's very few people that I'm afraid of in the ring. Jethro is one of them, and he's like right at the top because he's so unpredictable, and he doesn't care. He absolutely does not care. When you go in with Jethro. You got to think about it similar maybe to a Kane situation or a Mankind situation. You don't know what you're getting yourself into until that bell rings. That's the truth. Scary dude. You can try to predict his power. You can try to predict his offense, but you will fail. He's unorthodox. He's unorthodox in the way that he thinks. Well, apparently. And his size is scary. Apparently, D. Wayne is just as un unorthodox, using his tie to choke Nick. Ooh. D. Wayne getting the dirt in where he can. Yeah, now that it's easy to see these guys on the ground, now you can get in and do something, right, D. Wayne? Come on, brother. Who are you fooling? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm not knocking him. You know, he's done well so far. Ah. Oh, Ali taking a cheap shot at Bobby. Bobby won't have none of that, but he might cost his team a little bit here. He's got to be careful. The ref can only be distracted so long. He's, his attention is only so diversified. You know, speaking from experience, having six guys in a ring. Nightmare. It, it's got to be. Yeah, I mean, something's going to get by you every single time. Ooh, Chrono coming in to fire off an Ali. Oh, there he's in it. He's got him in the corner. He's got him where he wants him. Boom! Big old stinger splash. Boom! Big old go. Euro and nice. Ali is on the receiving end of both. Crow! Oh my. oh my gosh. Devastating clothesline. What a nasty clothesline there, huh? <laughs> a little bit of that Steiner liner in the sense that he just followed through completely. You know, most guys, they get that whip in on their lariat. Absolutely. But you know that good old Rick Steiner style? I'm just going to follow through with it till the end. See a little bit in, that in Ali's clothesline. Real nasty. Holding him in the corner, takes the straight just shots a, from Jethro. A little more pressure, a little more power, oh. a little more explosiveness to that. You got yourself a nasty, perhaps, finishing maneuver. Those chops, man, you feel those straight through to the spine, too. Jethro in a vertical suplex position. Whoa. Wow. Swingshot suplex. The power there, because you know he didn't have Chrono all the way there. He didn't have him. He, that was he, pure muscle. He pressured him. He powered him over. Wow. Slingshot suplexes are not easy. Yeah, yeah Bobby, you're not going to hurt Jethro that way, man. Wow. One shot sends Chrono down. Chrono, I think, is rethinking his return right now. He is out. He Does Chrono know what state he's in right now? I'm, I'm not quite sure because that death row slap was intentional with malice. Yeah, now he's choking him. Come I mean, on, you Rev. know, you said you were a cop. Was that not malice intent? Oh. Did oh. we not see a little bit of Axis race oh, he there? Had, he had malicious intent. Come he on. had, you know. A little bit of men's race there, man. A little bit of that criminal law terminology right there. He, that man acted. And he's got motive, too, because what we're talking about here is the culmination of the fights over the past few months with these guys. I mean, I'm not sure if you were to, if you were to charge Death Row Jethro, 
Could you really say you could build a case if you were his defense attorney for anything other than malice intent? And what? any near crime he commits in this ring, he's what? pretty much only prevented by the legalities of this company and the rules in ring. It's nothing short of near murder what he does in this ring. Well, this is his outlet. This is how he can do this legally. You know, but to be honest with you, if I were to charge him, I think it would be hard. I mean, obviously, he's a convict. He's been charged successfully before. But I would argue, as a defense attorney, that his state of mind to, to commit these offenses, you have to have intent. His, his intent, I, I, I think he's a blank slate. He's out there. He's just staring off into space. He's crazy. You can't you can't convict a crazy person. And it's not like you can plead insanity in this case because he's obviously well-minded enough to think through. Think oh, through. Oh, good Lord. I mean, he's thinking through these things with meditation, oh. you know? He's got like a first-degree style intent with this bad boy. Predetermined. Oh, he's getting ready with the spike. Oh. oh Tilt-a-whirl slam. Haven't seen that since the days of Norman Smiley. My gosh. Death Row Death Row has cleared this ring. I'm telling you, I'd be sweating if I was Death Row's attorney. <laughs> and if I were Death Row, I'd be keeping him. I'd be keeping him on a salary. Uh -oh. What are we doing here? Whoa! Some powder coming in there. What is that? Is that salt? Salt in the eyes? I think d might have just bit off more than he could chew. Oh, no. Ooh, Ooh bad bulldog. old bulldog right there. Ray's getting ready. Ray's got him for another bulldog. A bulldog? He said, give me double. He must have kept the tab open. Uh-oh. We're saying Bobby Crono. Bobby, Bobby looks what a little worse for wear. For? What the? What? Ali, why would Ali do that Ali's, to him? Ali's blinded by the salt. Wow. Wow. Talking about a couple dudes getting a dose of their own medicine. Am I right? D. Wayne calling for the timeout. There is no timeout in professional wrestling. He's going over to Jethro. Jethro. Jethro's got him. Another oh, bulldog. No. Oh, my God. D. Wayne. Man, I would not want to be him in this position right now. You know what? He is everybody's bullseye. I am not going to say poor D. Wayne. D. Wayne brought this upon himself. He brought in the, the salt or the powder or whatever it is. All of them are blinded. I mean, you're right. You are right. He did have this coming, right? But you can't help but just feel, if you are a human, it's what? a Wait. sympathy. What? Romero! <laughs> Romero oh, just man. delivered a DD or a Bulldog 2. Looks like he's had enough even. Wow, and this crowd is eating it up. I cannot blame them. What a stellar match so far. Ooh, Discus Lariat. Romero's, he's Zion's, lost control of this Zion's match. Zion's targeting up Death Row. Oh, Ooh, good lord. bicycle kick that sends Death Row packing right back to the penitentiary. What is Chrono doing? What's this? Ah! Chrono signature Send maneuver. Yep, that's his lucky 13. And there and we that's go. it. That's we the see bell. A tap. No surprise there. Ain't gonna last long at Chrono's 13. Well done, gentlemen.